Mr. Lamb, here I come in from the side. And we're going to continue kind of using our formula sheet to talk about different types of formulas today, focusing on circles. Oh, circle formulas? As long as it's formulas, I'm pretty happy to do it. Circle I'm, formulas. I'm going to go get my pen. Oh, Mr. Lamb forgot his pen. All right, our learning target today is you can calculate the area and circumference of a circle given the radius or diameter. So there's a lot of key words in there that we should talk about. First, what's the difference between area and circumference? Well, I think we need a circle. Okay, to the best of my ability, I will draw us a circle. That's pretty good. Still looks like an eight. Okay, whatever. Okay, so here's a circle. Not a perfect one, but let's just imagine it's a perfect circle. So area is a word that we know. The area is the inside of the shape, right? No so, different than a square, a rectangle, no. a triangle. And an so area has a special area formula. Is in here. Right. And the area of a circle, or the formula for the area of a circle, is pi times radius squared. And we'll talk about all that here in a second. Now, circumference is just a super fancy word that means outside. It's just the perimeter of a circle. But circles are special, so it has a special name. So it has a special name. name. So if we go around the circle, that is the circumference. And that's the circumference. Circumference, the distance around the circle. Just a fancy word that means perimeter. And there's two formulas for circumference, which we'll see on this slide. So we have one formula for area, and again, you're not memorizing these formulas. All of these formulas are on the formula sheet. So we have the formula for area, pi times radius squared, and we have two formulas for circumference, two times pi times r, which is the radius, or pi times d, which is the diameter. So do you want to talk about pi first and get that word out of the way? Sure. On your formula sheet, there is this lovely, we just go to the third row right at the end, two kind of underneath the circle, we have this little lovely pi, P-I, right? Not P-I-E, unfortunately, but P-I. And it's that kind of fancy symbol that like the little stairs with the squiggly. And talking to a few of my students already this year, I yeah. know last year, like, they had a little competition. About memorizing. Yeah, memorizing pi. So some of you, probably, or most of you, probably already know what pi is, but here's the catch. This year, we only want pi to go to two right. digits. We right? know that pi is an irrational number. It's our most famous irrational number. But for our purposes, you are not using the pi button on your calculator. You're going to literally type in 3.14. Yeah, if you use the pi button, it gives you like nine digits of yeah. pi. And then that makes the answer slightly bigger than the choices are going to be. Yeah, so we're going to use 3.14. You're literally going to type it in. And these little kind of squiggly equal signs means about. Pi is about because we know 3.14. Pi is on forever. And infinitely. Right? Yep. All right, so let's talk about these other keywords, radius and diameter. I don't know what happened to our diameter. Oh, no. It was there before. It's gone now, but here it is. It is back with us, oh, the diameter of the circle. So, go for it. Okay, so radius and diameter, there's a difference between them. Radius is half of a circle. It takes two of these, sorry, takes two of those to make one of these. So that's why when you look at the formula, it takes two of these to make one of those. Right. So if I had two radiuses together, two radii, I guess, then it would form one diameter. Yep. So radius is half the length of the diameter. And right? sometimes the problem will give you diameter when it wants you to use radius. Sometimes it will give you radius. The nice thing about that is... Anything that you could want you to look up, radius will get you there. That's right. And if for some reason you're like, man, I can't remember what they were talking about with this whole radius and diameter thing, on your formula sheet there is a circle and it has a diagram and it shows that the R cuts the rate, the, I'm sorry, the R cuts the diameter in half. So if you don't know, use your formula sheet. All right, let's find the area of a circle. So say they give me this lovely blue circle. And that's not what I want. <laughs> that's the second time. I know. Exactly I don't know thing. what I'm doing with my life. All right, here we go, guys. Sorry. Here it is. Boop. All right. So I want the pen. All right. So say I have this lovely blue circle, and it has a diameter. Remember, the diameter passes through the Goes center. Goes all the way across. Goes all the way across of 15 feet. 
So I go and I follow the steps. I grab my formula sheet, right? Or I look it up. I find the shape. I find the shape. There's a circle. I go down to where it says A, because I'm finding area. And area equals pi times radius squared. But here's, you know, these tricky teachers, right? Mean teachers are test makers, and they gave me the <laughs> diameter, and I have to use the radius. Well, that's right? okay because I know two of these equals one of those. Right, so if I cut it in half. And it's never a bad thing to draw it out. And then you pick up a calculator, even though we know that half of 15 is 7 and a half. We do 15 we're gonna take 15, divided by 15. And we're going to cut it in half, and we get 7.5. But now that I know the radius, I can use my formula, right? So this is the tricky one. If they give you the diameter when you're looking for area, you have to find the radius. So I plug in what I know, variable substitution. Pi is 3.14. Because we're never going to use the pi button. We're always going to use 3.14. 7.5 squared. Orders of operations, I'm going to square that 7.5 first. 56.25. And I get 56.25. And then, just like an order of operations, I bring that 3.14 down. 176. 176. 0.625? 0.625. Boy, 0. you are good. Woo. Feet squared, it's right? It's almost like we might have done that problem before. No, but I don't know. So, feet squared, right? Because I'm still dealing with area, just like with the rectangle and the triangle, the trapezoid and the parallelogram, if you're dealing with area, your units are square. Square feet, square inches, square meters, square centimeters, it doesn't matter. You always put that little two after the unit. And it's, and it's actually a big deal. You can get the problem wrong. If your Sometimes unit you can. Mean teachers, make, or test makers, yeah. they'll give you an answer on the test that will say 176.625 feet, feet and 176.625 feet squared. Yeah. Because they want to prove that you know area is square feet. That's right. Mean. So, mean teachers. All right, so area. Remember, with area, you have to use the radius, and your unit of measurement is going to, to be squared. squared. Okay. So let's go on to circumference, which again is the distance around the shape. Why two circles? Well, because with circumference, there's two formulas. Oh, you do one. I'll do the other. We'll see if we get the same okay. answer. I'll show the diameter. You show the radius. So let's do a diameter. And I'm going to go this way this time. Because remember, it can go a bunch of different It can. So I'll say the diameter is 10 meters. And I'll say, starting from the center point, you know radius can actually be any point. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't? A straight line across, right? Well, and so you had 10 line. feet. Well, but across. a straight line across. I know. Okay, you can go to any point on the circle. And well, since yours was 10, and it takes two of mine to make one of yours, then yours is it's going to be, gonna be five. five. Five meters, right? All right, so I'll use my formula. Circumference equals pi times diameter. And I'll use mine. Circumference equals two times pi times the radius. All right, and then I use variable substitution. Pi is 3.14 times the diameter of 10. And I'll do the same thing, except this time I have to go two, two. and I'll use the dot because that makes it better than the thing I used before. 3.14 times five. And 3.14 times 10 is 31.4. And two times five, because you can multiply in any order. Two times five is 10, ten. times 3.14 is 31.4. Meters, right? Meters. Because when you're dealing with these geometric formulas, you have to put your unit of measurement. That's right, because we're talking about the distance around the shape. The shape. So 31.4 meters, 31.4 meters. That one gave us the radius, so we use the formula for the radius. This one gave us the diameter, so we use the formula with the diameter. Use what they give you. Yeah, so for circumference, it's a lot easier because whatever you know, you choose that formula. If yeah. you know the R, use the one with the R. If you know the D, use the one with the D. It's very simple. All right, let's talk about something slightly more complicated, these word problems. Yes, word problems. Now, there's two things you really need to know about word problems when it comes to doing circles. First thing is a drawing always a good thing. Yes. Drawing a picture of and then it's else. like, how do I know whether they're asking me for circumference or area? Because again, mean yeah. teachers are test makers, True. right? They're not going to say. Now, what's the area? Right. 
Right. So, so let's look at this and see if we can figure it out. Yeah. It says Miss Hoffman, who's a really good friend of ours, she wanted to give her dog more exercise because he's really red. Yes. She so she put him on a, on a leash in the yard that was 20 feet long. The leash is 20 feet long. And attached the leash to a pole, a pole. in the center Poles in the of center. her yard. So she went outside and she put a pole in the center of her yard. Right. And over that, she put, dropped the leash. And it can go out 20 feet. And it goes out 20, did I say feet? Yeah, yep. 20 feet. Okay, so here's the dog, right? And it says, how many feet did the, ooh, it says how many feet. feet. So feet so is just, just the distance, unit of measurement, right? which is distance, which just means. So he comfort. wants to know if the dog starts walking and goes around the circle. Now that's an egg. Well, that's actually got a little point on the side. Okay? Don't go get, don't get away from my throat. You made by my circle. I did. I'll let you get away with that one. Yeah. This is actually better than the last one I drew. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, right? So, so the dog walked. Around. Did it, did it walk in here? It did it. It said around. Because, no, it just gets on the outside of the leash. It's walking around the pole. Right. That keyword so, around means perimeter. So right? it's walking around. So we're looking for a circumference. So right. circumference equals, now, that's the radius, radius because it's halfway across. The dog walk, if the diameter is actually 40 feet. Right. But they right? gave us the radius, so we'll use that and the formula. the radius, 20 feet. 2 times pi times r. There you go. So 2 times 3.14. You have type it in. I don't. Times, it's here. Oh, you can use mine. Okay. Times 20. So 20 times 2 times 3.14, and I jacked it up. So I'm going to do 3.14 times 40, 125.6. 125.6. Feet. Feet. Just feet. Right? Because it says right here, how many feet? That tells us that it's circumference. Around, that tells us it's circumference. From the center to kind of the side of the circle will tell us that that's the radius, or right? Or from any point to in any the point. circle. He's going 20 feet, right? 20 he's going to go feet. as far as he can and just kind of walk around the pole. Yep. So all of those key words kind of let us know what we're doing in the word problem. So let's look at this one. This one says, Miss Berger bought a round pool for her girls to play in. It should say, Miss Berger's dad bought a round pool for <laughs> no, his grandchildren. No, it really meant to say, Miss Berger bought. Okay, fine. The pool was 25 feet from one side to the other, so right? So all the way across. Oh. Come on, man. Okay, okay, here we go. go. All right, all the way across. The pool was 25 feet from one side to the other, right? So like Mr. Lamb is going to do, all the way, it's 25, and we know that it's a circle. Oh, gosh. That's an egg. Okay. All right. It says, how many square feet? We're math teachers, not our teachers. Square feet. Which means, square, what are we looking for? Square feet means it's area. How many square feet of space is the pool going to take up? Right, so if you take up space, you take up the whole thing, You just don't right? take up the little spot, dot around no, the No, I'm not building a fence. I'm building, the, they oh, want to swim in the whole good pool. Good example, fence versus pool. Yeah, so like, they, yeah, they're not just going to walk in a circle. They're going to play all up in there, right? All right, but I know square feet really is the key word that tells yeah. me, boom, you're doing area. So I look at the formula. Area equals pi times radius squared. But they didn't give me the radius, right? They I thought we could figure it out, though. So I have to take 25 divided by 2, which is 12.5. So I have 3.14 times 12.5 squared. Again, order of operations, you're going to do that exponent. 12.5 squared is 156.25. And then I'm going to multiply it by that 3.14. And I'm actually going to type that into that calculator. So I get 490.625. My God, we like 625. I know. Feet squared, right? Square feet. So how much area is that taking up inside of her yard? Quite a bit. 490.625. Those kids are going to have a lot of fun. They're going to have a lot of fun. Right? So if you're confused, watch that next video. Actually, watch the next video anyway, even if you're not confused, because I show you a cool calculator trick.